Hello, hello, hello. I am the Linux Mensch. Oh no, change the video. We got the wrong video on. Hello, hello, hello. I am the Linux Mensch. What do you do if you fully converted over to Linux and you want to run iTunes? Well, iTunes only makes the program to work in Windows and of course the Apple ecosystem. Now you could have an extra computer that's running Windows or you could use Wine, maybe. Now Wine is a program that's available in most Linux distributions and it stands for Wine, well it's spelled and pronounced the same way as the stuff you drink, but it stands for Wine is not an emulator. So when you're doing virtualization, that's emulating. Well, Wine is not an emulator. So in Wine, you can download it in most Linux distributions and you can run some Windows applications in it. But iTunes doesn't work in it. Now I've tried it several times and I couldn't get it working. And I've also watched some Linux YouTubers who tried on camera to get it working and they couldn't get iTunes installed and working properly in Wine as well. So the only solution really is to have an extra computer to use iTunes or to create a virtual machine of Windows in your Linux box. And I did that and I'm going to show you. So let's get to it. This is my bare metal computer. And I'm running, of course, Arch Linux and with the awesome window manager. And I'm going to open up my Xterm. Just in case you don't believe me, let's type in NeoFetch. And as you can see, I'm running Arch Linux and I'm up to, well, you might think, why is he using so much RAM? <laughs> I'm going to explain that. I'm using nine, almost nine and a half gigabytes of RAM. Well, number one, I have my OBS recording studio on and I already have my virtual machine of Arch Linux on. Up and running that is so this is just to prove to you that I'm in Arch Linux now let's close this these are my virtual machines now now I don't know if you've been following my channel for a long time and perhaps you've been away I've been saying this in almost every video now if you're watching a few weeks ago or a month ago and I don't always go to this screen but sometimes I do on camera I had like about maybe 15 virtual machines going down to the bottom here Anyways, I deleted all those virtual machines. I cleaned them up. I deleted my Windows 10 virtual machine. I deleted my Windows 11 virtual machine. And I deleted many of my Linux virtual machines as well. Just to clean up. And I do that every once in a while. So the reason why I like iTunes is that back in the day when I was full-time in Windows, I used to use iTunes all the time. I used to buy music from iTunes. I bought a lot of music from iTunes. And I downloaded them, of course, into my hard drive. I have them saved on a separate backup drive. And I copied them into my Linux box. And if I want to listen to them, I listen to them in my Linux box, my Arch Linux, using Rhythmbox. And it works. The problem I have is that I still have an old... I have two iPods. Not the pads, but the pods. And I have my music in them, and one of them I play in the car. And the other one, sometimes, you know, I might listen to it at night with headphones. And I can use Rhythmbox in Linux to add and delete music, but it messes up my files. And it messes up my playlist. Now, it doesn't mess up the automated list in um, your iPod. When you download into iTunes into your iPod, you know, artist and that artist song and so forth but i made a lot of playlists myself and it messes up those so when i plug it into my linux box using rhythm box it if i have let's say i have 10 songs in a playlist it will duplicate them there'll be 20 songs then it'll be 30 songs next thing you know i'll have a hundred songs and if i keep using it it'll be a thousand songs now it doesn't take up more space in the ipod but it just so you open up a playlist and there's a thousand songs or 500 songs you only got like 50 songs in that playlist or 10 songs in that playlist so 
I found the only thing that really works is plugging it into plugging my iPods into iTunes if I want to add, delete music, so forth. And the other thing too is in the computer, I I don't use it that often, but I do like to have access to my iTunes account through a computer rather than my phone, my iPhone or my iPad. Anyways, yesterday I reinstalled Windows as a virtual machine. Now I did have a Windows 10 a while, like maybe over a month ago. I had a Windows 10 for a year or so, but I deleted all those and I reinstalled Windows yesterday. And let's take a look at it. So now I'm in my virtual machine of Windows 10. So this is Windows. I didn't do too much to it. I installed Firefox so that let's open up Firefox. And it looks like the Firefox I use in, you know, I formatted my Firefox the way I do in my Linux machines. And let's go to Arch Linux. And I just want to show you this for a second. I'm going to try to keep this a short video. <laughs> so if we type in, uh, what should I type in? Wine. This is it here. Oh, it's outdated. There should be a new update coming soon. Anyways, we open it up. This is Wine. You can install Wine and try running some Windows apps in it because some Windows apps do work in it. And I wouldn't be gaming in it for sure. I'm sure gaming wouldn't work in it. And iTunes doesn't work in it. But you can try it. And this is what I was talking about. And let's see if they have it in the wiki. And I'm just showing you this because... Well, because let's go to the wiki. Let's see if the wiki gives some information about it. Just in case you want to learn more about wine and want to try using it. And this is wine. So you go to the Arch Wiki and type in wine. And it talks about it. You can read about it, but I'm not using wine. I don't even have it installed on my system. But I've tried it several times. It shows you how to use it. And I did have a small Windows program. A long time ago, I was using wine. I had it installed on my system. And I had a small program that did work in it. Anyways, that's wine. So let's close that. And of course, this is my system. Uh, this is my C drive. When I made this virtual machine yesterday, I gave it 127 gigabytes of hard space. And right now with the installation and with iTunes and Firefox and the pre and the default installed apps or the apps that are installed by default I'm only using 25 gigabytes of hard space which is not bad okay let's try this one let's go to task manager let's open up this you can see up here I gave it 8 gigs of RAM I gave this virtual machine 8 gigs of RAM and right now I'm running at 2.2 gigabytes of RAM. What else I'm gonna, I'm just gonna open up iTunes and close off the video cause I don't want this to be a long video. And let's open up iTunes. And there we have it. And of course uh, the resolution is off cause I have the resolution at large. So, I mean, normally for iTunes, I don't know if you people use iTunes or not. You could hit display settings. And it could go down to 19, or go up to 1920 by 1080. Let's keep the changes. And there's iTunes. Now, um, I like to keep the resolution larger. Uh, partly be because of my age and partly because of the videos. I don't like things really small. And um, let's close that. Let's go back to iTunes. And there you have it. And I'm not logged into my iTunes account because I do have an iTunes account. I'm not logged into the account, but if I log into the account, I'll be able to access all the music that I purchased. And I'll be able to plug in my iPods and move files around, delete music, add music, whatever. And that's it. I am the Linux Mitch.
So today I showed you how I access iTunes in my Linux box using a virtual machine of Windows 10. And you could also access some other Windows programs if you need to use them that way. And I also explained how you can download Wine and use Wine, but iTunes won't work in Wine and other, uh, there might probably be some other Windows programs that won't work in Wine. So really the best solution is to keep an extra computer with Windows on it, or you could dual boot Windows and Linux, or you could have a virtual machine of Windows in your Linux box. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching. Until next time, I am the Linux Mensch.